If you've ever opened any electronics in your house, you would see something like this behind me. What a mess! This chapter, you're going to learn about capacitors. You see this big black thing next to me? This is how it looks like if you open up a calculator or something similar. So, computer, phone, your PS station, your whatever lah, okay? Electronics and capacitors play a big role in all the electronics over here. So generally they look something like that. I have with me two little friends. They can be really small, like you know, like this size. Pretty much the size of my teeth. If I put it like you know, right here on my teeth. Okay? So these tiny things can go up to the size of water bottles. Like uh, over here. They can be this size, they can go bigger. But anyway, let's get going to see how these capacitors with sexy legs. See their legs? really cute ones. How do these capacitor work in order to understand how we can use them? So let's go and see what are capacitors exactly and how do they do their work. So a capacitor is made out of two metal plates, has to be a conductor, okay? And we are going to place an air gap, a dielectric or an insulator in between the capacitor in between the metal plates, all right? So the whole idea of capacitor is I want to be able to have one plate to be maybe positively charged and the other plate to be negatively charged, all right? So to separate the charges. Okay, so the way we, you might think of doing this is, oh, I know, let's connect this to a battery. You know? Because no, I, I've seen this drawing before, uh, chapter 17 in AS. Good idea. So we're going to connect this to the power supply, but before we do so, I'm going to add an ammeter there so that I can measure the current flow, just to see whether it's constant or not. Connect this to a power supply. Let's say this one is E. And I will connect this one back to a resistor. Okay, the purpose of this resistor is not to annoy you or to resist change. This is to slow down the charge flow. All right, we need to slow down charge flow to prevent the capacitor from overheating and burning. If you ever had a chance to do a lab regarding capacitor, if you connect it directly to the power supply, you will burn the capacitor, you will smell the capacitor burning, and then you can throw it away already. Okay, so we want to slow down the charge flow and to monitor the potential difference, like all good circuit experiments, we need to measure the current, we need to measure the potential difference. So I'll connect a voltmeter parallel across the capacitor. So here I'm going to talk about what is current again, in case you forget, because why? how long has it been since you think about what current is? So I'll write out the definition here for you, just as a recap. Current is defined as rate of charge flow. All right, so, and the charge or the predominant charge carrier in this case, like most cases, is the electron, okay? So this is the rate of charge flow. Um, so let's think about the electron. Now, when you close the switch, uh, what happened? The battery or the power supply will provide energy for the electrons inside the wire. Now, all this blue color one is connecting wire. They are conductors. Okay. So now, the electrons are your charge carrier. They will carry the charge from the negative terminal okay so this electron so imagine the electron just chilling inside the wire until you close the switch just like you chilling at home until your teacher pulls up the assignment okay then the electron will begin to mobilize so the electron inside the wire will begin to receive energy inside here because it creates a potential gradient remember chapter 17 it will push or provide energy or give work done such that the electron will begin to move towards this negative plate. Now this plate, let's say I call this plate, this one plate A, this one plate B. La. Plate B is neutral one. It's a metal plate, it's just very neutral, living its good life. And then suddenly it is invaded by a bunch of electrons. Does the electron want to stay here? Well, you have no choice because the battery is like, I am doing work and I am displacing the electrons to put this here. Then plate B is like, okay, law, fine, I will be negatively charged. But then plate A will look across the river, no, like, will look across the air gap and see that across 
across me, the plate that is opposite me, is now negatively charged. Eh? Ayo, I cannot be negative charged anymore. I cannot hold on to my electron anymore because across the air gap, this is not that wide, uh, maybe a few millimeter or a few nanometer, okay? So across this air gap, since your neighbor is negatively charged, you cannot keep, it's harder for you to hold on to your negative charges. So then the negative charge will say, okay, it's nice being here, bye. So the electrons will flow this way. Back to the battery, and the battery will then give the electron energy to move to the B plate, the negative plate. Since the electron is going to move away from plate A, what happens to plate A? It becomes positively charged because, sorry, oh, the electron go well. So if maybe you want to symbolize on one side, I draw five electrons. So on the other side, it will probably be charged the same amount because this positive charge is induced. All right. So you can see now the, the, the story is complete. But once again, just a reminder, air gap, the electron cannot pass. Huh? It's like you shall not pass. It's a bit like plate A and plate B was neutral. They were living their happy life. And then when you close the switch, suddenly the electron begin to invade plate B. Plate A, look at plate B. A, you become negative already. Huh? I better be, I have to become positive in response to that. That is called induced. Huh? So if you learn chemistry, the idea of having induced dipole is the same thing. If you find it hard to imagine the charges flowing, here's a perfect simulation for you. So we have this same setup, a circuit uh, with a battery. There's no resistor here, but that's okay. And here's our capacitor, parallel plates. Let us show the capacitor voltmeter. So when everything is chill, all the electrons in the wire are just chilling there. But let's see what happens when we start charging the capacitor here. So we need to close the switch, right? Okay, you see the charges moving. The charges move and collect on either side of the plate until this voltage reaches almost 6 volts. It doesn't really quite, never quite reaches 6, but when it's fully charged, we know when the battery, 6 volts, equals to the voltage across the capacitor. That's when we know it's fully charged. Everything is stored, all the energy there. The battery is pushing all the charges to stay at the plate. What happens when you discharge? See, if I try to click this all. It says, hang on a second, there's still a battery in the circuit. You cannot just discharge. So I'm going to remove the battery. Okay. And I'm going to let it discharge. So actually, the moment I do this, what do you think is going to happen to the charges? Like we said just now, the charges will all go back to its original position. So you see, ooh, all the blue electrons just go back and spread out through the wire again. Okay. So that is how you can think of charging and discharging. Go try out the simulation down in the link below to see if you can better understand how what is happening in all these particles. So you might be thinking, but miss, in AS, oh, we got this, nah, we put the electron here, and then the electron will travel somewhere inside the plate. That one is when I purposely put an electron there, on purpose one. But if I connect this way, if I set up in a capacitor, okay, this will not happen. So if the capacitor is built properly, that is, this is a no man's land, uh, this gray area, no electron land. Okay, so they stay inside the conductor. It's a bit like, you know, you, when you have, when you have charges, they will have a tendency to stay on the plate because this is a conductor. All right, so right now, if there's charge flowing, there's definitely current flowing. Uh, the current flow we can measure uh, using the ammeter. So I'm just going to draw roughly this direction of I, okay? So I think right now it will be a good time for us to draw some graphs to see what kind of uh, difference in voltmeter reading, ammeter reading, and also the charge stored on the capacitor. Okay, so you can see there are some graphs here. We're just going to roughly draw what happens to the capacitor. So this Q uh, is the charge stored on one single plate, okay? So this is charge stored on a single plate. Which means plate A or plate B, doesn't matter. It should be the same magnitude of charge. You know, conservation of charge. It's like you take away five electrons from plate A and you put at plate B. 
meaning plate B will be charged negative 5 and plate A will be positive 5. Because when they start, before we close the switch, before all this invasion, it was neutral, right? This means the total charge should still be neutral. So either plate A or plate B. But if you take both plate A and plate B, then your net charge is zero. Okay. So before you close, okay, both plates are neutral. So the net charge is zero. So once you close the switch, the charge begin to flow. Uh, charge will accumulate in this manner, like an exponential graph, plateau. So this is normally we will call this Q naught, which is the maximum charge. Okay, so max charge, and this is where we say that the capacitor is full. On this point here, capacitor full. All right. We all, in other words, the battery is unable to provide enough energy for any more electrons to go. Because the first electron that you put, that you deposit on plate B is very easy. Because plate B is neutral. Ma. You put an electron there, still okay. Second electron is harder. Third electron is harder. Fourth electron is even harder. So the more charge you put on plate B, the more the already existing electrons on plate B will be like, no. We have no other space. We don't want the six electron to come in. So eventually you reach a point where the battery is unable to put or push any more charge into plate B because max out now. It's a bit like you la first hour of class still okay, second hour of class still okay, seventh hour of class brain still okay, no? I don't know. Okay, so it's the same idea. So if you think about the relationship between a uh, I and Q here to here. By the way, this I here will be the m meter reading. Lah. Okay. So in case you are asked to design a paper 5 question, please be aware that we can measure the current or the rate of charge flow because I is equal to dq dt. Oh. So if I is dq dt, meaning this gradient will be this graph. So if you look at the value of Q when it's very, very small, when it's when the time is very early, the gradient is very steep, meaning the current will be very large. Okay, and then somewhere here, it will plateau and flatten, meaning the current, which is the gradient of this part, will be close to zero. So you're going to get a graph that looks a bit like this. Okay, so a good analogy to think about, right, when a capacitor is being charged is a bit like pouring water into a water bottle. When your water bottle is empty and you pour water inside, you can pour very fast, right? But when the water bottle is almost full, you will slow down the water flow. Okay? So here, your current reading is zero. So sometimes they will ask, how do you know the capacitor is full? M meter, no reading. Okay? So here, this one, this... So here is where your capacitor is also full. Okay, last. It will happen at the same time. All right. Second thing, let's think about the voltmeter reading. Okay. So when you think about the voltmeter reading, right, at first there is no charge. So no charge meaning the voltmeter reading is going to start off at zero. No charge. Right? You add more charge, you build up a stronger and stronger electric field in between the plates. Okay, or in other words, the voltmeter will begin to increase. Voltmeter reading will begin to increase until it plateaus at the same spot. Hmm. And what is this reading? This reading will be the EMF. Because uh, think about the definition of EMF. This is work done per unit charge. So the non-electrical energy, maybe the chemical energy inside the battery, converts to electrical energy. So now the electron has in an energy. Let's say, for example, it has 9 volts. Lah. Okay, let's think of the number, 9 volts. So one coulomb got 9 volts. I got 9 volts of energy that I can use to travel to plate B. Okay? But some of it will be taken away by the resistance, right? Understandably so, because... Uh, Resistor, all right, and then some of it will be taken by the, I mean, some of it will be used to deposit on plate B, okay. So depending on how you connect the power supply, okay. So this 
situation here, if let's say this is 9 volt, maybe this one will be a fraction of 9 volt. Okay, but you will reach a point where what I can do is I can adjust the ratio, but that one will be a later kind of later question. So let me undelete this first. Okay, so this one is your maximum potential difference. Okay, so maybe not EMF, but here would be a Vmax. So it will hit a maximum potential. Okay, whether the resistance will take the voltage and will take at what ratio, not in syllabus. Okay, so right now, if it's connected directly, okay, let's say this resistor is not significant enough to steal the ratio, then this one can be considered the same as uh, 9 volt. Okay, so maybe the resistor will take some of the energy, but not a lot. So this value of R is adjusted, but to what ratio and what equation that is not in your syllabus line. All right. So basically, the idea here is you will reach a point where the energy you have is no longer enough to add more electron. Or in other words, the potential difference across AB and the potential difference across the EMF will be the same. And the reason why they are the same is because you already set up a potential difference here. So maybe when you start, oh, you're like 1 volt, the battery is 9 volt. So I still have enough energy to overcome 1 volt. 2 volt battery give me 9 volt. I still can overcome 3, 4, 5. Eventually when in order the price of entry to go to plate B is 9 volt, then sorry, oh, no space there. Okay? Not no space, not, not enough energy. Okay? So that's the barrier to entry. Do you need to know the shape of the graph? Not really. But the idea of what happens when we connect a capacitor to a voltmeter because sometimes they will ask you to explain the charging mechanism okay so i'm going to zoom out a bit and we'll write about the charging mechanism so here you can see i've already started writing when the switch is closed okay electrons will begin to flow to plate b all right and this causes the electron to leave plate a plate a will be induced positively charged and this continues until the potential difference across the plates or across the capacitor oops, across the capacitor or the plates uh, is equal to either the maximum potential or the power supply. All right so you will see some of this when we do some past year questions. All right so that would be the charging mechanism of the capacitor.